Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's live broadcast, Comparative Genome and Transcriptome Analysis of Small Cell Numbers. I am Brenda Kelly Kim of LabRoots, and I'll be your moderator for today's event. LabRoots.com is the leading scientific social networking site, and we are proud to bring you this interactive web seminar. For more information, visit us at LabRoots.com. Here's how this presentation works. We want to hear from you. Questions, comments, and even answers can be submitted via the green Q&A button at the lower left of your screen. We'll try to get everyone, but if not, we'll make sure to follow, follow up with you by email. You can enlarge the slide window by clicking on the screen icon in the lower right-hand corner of the slide window. If you can't hear or see this presentation properly, let us know by clicking on the support button at the top right or the Q&A button in the lower left. I would now like to introduce today's speaker, Dr. Christian Corfage. Dr. Christian Corfage is Director, R&D Scientific Applications at Kyogen in Hilden. His responsibilities include the development and evaluation of new amplification and assay technology and solutions for single-cell research. Dr. Corfage joined Kyogen in 1997 and has held various positions in research and development in the areas of real-time PCR methods, isothermal amplification methods, and single-cell technology. For more information about our speaker, please click on his name to learn about his background. I'll now turn it over to Dr. Korfaj. Thank you very much, Brenda. Welcome, everybody. I hope you enjoy the next hour of our webinar. I would like to talk about the functional linkage between the genome and transcriptome, which can be de decoded by the comparative genome and transcriptome analysis of small cell numbers. The talk needs about 45 minutes, and then we will have further 50 minutes or so for questions and answers. I would like to underline, uh, I would like, uh, to underline uh, that the products I talk about are for research use only. All Although the products can be used for the analysis of cancer cells, for example, none of them is intended for diagnosis, disease prevention, or disease treatment. So uh, this is a little overview about my talk. At first, I would like to give a brief introduction into the topic of cancer development. I will present a very few slides for single-cell genomics and single-cell transcriptomics, which are very useful analysis methods for cancer research. But the main part represents the topic of the talk, the comparative genome and transcriptome analysis of the, small, of, uh, of the same sample. So coming to a very little introduction to cancer development, um, most likely cancer is developed from a single founder cell seen here on the, on the left side. This uh, little founder cell comprises mutations that result in uncontrolled cell divisions in otherwise differentiated tissue. During further cell divisions, more and more mutations accumul accumulated in daughter cells. Some of these daughter cells will die, but others can generate further mutated daughter cells. Finally, the cancer tissue consists of various clones of cells with a huge variety of different genomes. Some of these cells may migrate to form metastasis. According, for example, to Lawson, uh, uh, who published a, a, a little publication in Nature um, last week, uh, cells founding metastasis uh, or cell founding metastasis show a stem-like expression pattern. Uh, so all kinds of mutations can occur during cancer evolution, but most striking in cancer evolution are structural and numerical uh, chromosome changes in karyotypes in the final stage of cancer. Uh, in 2011, Nicholas Nevin uh, dissected tumor tissues in small sections in order to analyze genomic changes occurred in these sectors. He found cells here in uh, green that show no or only minor changes in chromosome numbers. In other sectors, like these blue, uh, yellow, or uh, red sectors, 
uh, he found a strong degree of an euploidy seen in the panels on the right side on, uh, of this slide. Finally, uh, cancer tissue comprises highly unoiploidic cells as seen here in the karyotype on the right side. Uh, it was found that the karyotype of many cells is highly variable within a tumor sample. In order to analyze the influence of genome changes on the transcriptome, it is necessary to use cell clones with a small cell number. For Christian, we're going to need to know what slide number you're on. Pardon me? This is uh, slide 7. Can you see that? Got it. Got it. Okay. Final. So, um, so uh, to make sure that effects are not diluted by various genotypes, one has to use very uh, tiny cell numbers or cell clones to make sure that uh, these are derived from the uh, same genotype. Today, the highly attractive technology for genome and transcriptome analysis is next generation sequencing or NGS. But NGS technology requires more nucleic acids for analysis than that what is packed within a few cells, which you would like to analyze from the cancer tissue. Therefore, whole genome amplification uh, is necessary for DNA analysis and whole transcriptome amplification uh, is necessary for RNA analysis. On slide 8, you can see that uh, a little overview about uh, our product portfolio for single cell applications. We offer three different kits for the amplification of DNA or RNA from very small cell numbers down to a single cell. And two new kits are launched that couple the amplification of RNA or DNA and library prep for NGS. Slide nine, coming to single cell uh, genomics. As I said before, tumors may have evolved various genomes within a single cancer tissue. The more evolved a tumor is, the more genome changes were occurred. The Replicy single cell kit is made for copying the cellular DNA of single cells for further analysis, for example, for NGS. Ideally, the DNA that is generated by the whole genome amplification process must be a perfect copy of the template DNA of the single cell. That means without bias or without errors. In order to minimize errors during the DNA amplification, amplification method of single cell DNA, we use the proofreading V29 polymerase in our kits. Uh, the Replicy single cell kit uh, is seen here right in the, uh, in the middle of the, of the slide uh, 10, is a whole genome amplification method using 1 to 1,000 cells as starting material, and the method uses the V29 polymer polymerase, as I said before. The V29 polymerase is polymerase with high proofreading activity, and this is very important, a strong DNA strand displacement activity which is highly suitable to uh, run also to, uh, through hairpin structures. You can start with single cells directly, so no DNA preparation is necessary. And in the upper box, you can see the Replig single cell library kit, which couples WGA and NGS library preparation for NGS. In order to show the performance very briefly, you can uh, see uh, our NGS results, our, uh, some of our NGS results in slide 11. We stressed re the Replicy whole genome amplification process by testing bacterial cells. Of course, bacterial cells compri comprise very tiny genomes that are roughly 1,000-fold smaller than the human cancer genome. Therefore, the amplification rate must be much higher uh, than with human cancer cells if starting from bacterial cells and errors 
will be more pronounced because of this higher amplification rate. Starting from two to five cells, this is uh, not more than 10 to 25 femtograms of bacterial cells of the bacterial DNA. About 30 to 40 micrograms of DNA is generated. This corresponds to an amplification factor of several billion fold. And the amplified DNA was used for library prep and next generation sequencing, and the results are seen on the right side of this slide 11. If doing so, we found no side products generated during the WGA process. This is indicated by the finding that up to 99% uh, of the reads mapped perfectly to the bacterial genome here. We saw almost the same performance with forward and reverse sequencing reads, which indicates that this WGA DNA is highly uh, suitable for NGS reading. Looking for error rates uh, in slide 12, despite on the billion fold uh, amplification, the rate of errors, insertion deletions, or chimeras is very, very low. Looking on the error rate, for example, the values are indistinguishable between NGS data obtained after replicate amplification or with non-amplified DNA. Below, uh, this uh, makes uh, so uh, the WGA DNA is highly suitable for NGS without uh, um, uh, introducing errors or insertions and deletions. Below you find a reference uh, for a detailed protocol that describes the whole process from the cell uh, to WGA and uh, uh, up to NGS. So this protocol is published in 2013 in current protocols uh, of molecular biology. Coming uh, to a very little uh, uh, um, details on single cell transcriptomics. Our WTA kit is made for copying the RNA transcriptome of a single or more cells to discover uh, what is different between individual cells, for example, in uh, cancer tissue. Various protocols are offered where you choose between oligo DT primer or random primers uh, to select for the RNA of uh, your interest, for example. The amplification process uses once again the proofreading V29 polymerase, but in this case here, we use a modified V29 polymerase with a higher affinity to very small cDNA amounts. The Replige WTA kit seen here in the middle of the uh, uh, slide uh, 14 can be used for whole transcriptome amplification from 1 to 1,000 cells. Uh, we tested also slightly higher, higher cell numbers, which, are, uh, which work also uh, fine, but I would recommend uh, um, the 1,000 cells as the upper uh, line of this um, kit. Again, you start the process directly from single cells. No, there is no need for sample prep, and the process is divided into three steps. First, the reverse transcription synthesizes cDNA, which is ligated thereafter in the second step. And in the third step, we have uh, uh, the uh, ligated cDNA, which is amplified there. In the upper box, you can see again the Replige single cell RNA library kit, which couples WTA and NGS library prep. Uh, in slide, uh, 15, we see some uh, results. Uh, we could show a high sample-to-sample -sample correlation of gene expression profiles after whole transcriptome amplification using the Replig WTA single cell kit. With very low cell numbers, uh, the transcripts of about 9,000 genes could be detected uh, routinely. And in total, the Replig WTA method amplifies RNA very reproducible from single cells so that the abundance that the abundance of thousands of mRNAs can be 
uh, can be reproducible analyzed. On this slide, you can see what you expect from data analysis, analysis using variable cell numbers. This is really typical. The scatter plot shows that most spots are very close to the diagonal with little exceptions. If looking on high cell numbers like 50 cells, 25 cells, or 10 cells. But with low cell numbers, and this is very typical, uh, more exceptions are expected and seen in this case, which are based on individual transcriptome differences with, uh, within single cells. So this patterning uh, with low cell numbers underlines what was said by Jim Eberwein, for example, on a single cell genomics conference in Utrecht very recently. He mean every cell is unique. And this is uh, here underlined by this three cell cell uh, analysis. Below you find again a reference of a detailed protocol from uh, the single cells to WTA and NGS, also in current protocols. So coming uh, now to the main topic of uh, the webinar, in order to decode how genomic changes change the expression profile, we compare the genome and the transcriptome of the same sample by NGS. For doing so, it is necessary that all steps necessary prior to NGS are highly comparable between genome and transcriptome analysis and are adapted to each other so that if bias is introduced, it is most likely the same for the genome and the transcriptomic material. So we used in our study the RepliG cell WGA and WTA kit for the amplification of cellular DNA and RNA of the same sample. In slide 70, you see the RepliG cell WGA WTA kit uh, in this box. And um, in the last box, in, in a highly paralyzed process, WGA and WTA, WTA is performed from the same sample, and this process can be started directly from 25 cells up to 1,000 cells without an extra purification step for RNA or DNA. At first, I would like to introduce comparative transcriptome and genome NGS analysis in the next slide. So one central concept in biology is that the phenotype of cells is realized based on the genome as a basic information memory. Uh, the, this means that the genome determines how the cell reacts or at least how the transcriptome is changed upon the triggers or a changing environment. If information that is fixed in the genome is changed, as in cancer cells, for example, that means the sequence is different from the origin, the transcriptome will react in a different way. Of course, not every change in base composition will change also the transcription profile, but changes in uh, promoters or changes in coding regions, changes in chromosome structure or copy number often change the transcription profile. These changes in genomic sequences are often seen in cancer tissues. Many tumors are a mosaic of various genotypes and result accordingly to a mosaic of various cell behaviors. Please remember that different tumor cells react differently, for example, upon anti-tumor therapies, and a very few cells survive eventually because of their different genomes. In order to discover which changes of the cancer genome drives specific changes in the transcript, transcription profile, the analysis method has to meet a few requirements. First, the same cancer sample has to be analyzed for genome and expression profile analysis. Second, because RNA and DNA share partially the same sequence, the reaction for RNA and DNA must be split as long as necessary to get individual results from the transcriptome and the genome. 
ideally NGS has to be performed in the same run. Third, uh, all processing steps necessary for the comparative analysis should be identical for RNA and DNA. And uh, fourth, because the genome changes are often found in mosaic-like patterns in tumors, the analysis must work also for small samples comprising only a few cells. And a small number of few, uh, few cells uh, require WGA and WTA from the same sample for NGS analysis. And below, again, you find a detailed protocol for parallel WGA, WTA that describes the process from the cells to WGA and WTA and NGS. And the process was again published in, uh, in current protocols. Here you can see, in, in slide 20, you can see the uh, RepliG WGA, WGA and WTA workflow in more detail. This uh, RepliG method comprises a highly parallel process that starts with the lysis of the sample. The lysis process makes sure that every cell is lysed and all nucleic acids, uh, that means RNA, RNA as well as DNA, are stabilized. After the lysis, the material is split and dispensed to two reaction tubes for further parallel processing in WGA and WTA. After gDNA removal, WTA starts with the reverse transcription to gen generate cDNA, and because the V29 polymerase needs very large DNA molecules, uh, the ligation of all cDNA fragments is the only way how cDNA is channeled into a V29 polymerase-based amplification. So finally, the amplification is performed by, an, by a RepliG-like reaction using the new genetically engineered V29 enzyme, which I mentioned before. This V29 uh, enzyme has a higher affinity to low DNA amounts and is high, highly suitable for this reaction, therefore. To make sure that WTA and WGA is performed in the same way, uh, we adapted the first steps to w, uh, of WGA to the process needed for WTA. So the process here described as a WGA rec, uh, ready reaction on the right side here results in DNA fragments of similar size found after cDNA synthesis. And therefore, a ligation and amplification is, uh, 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 or a ligation is, uh, is needed, and the ligation and amplification is simply the same for WGA and WTA. So this is a re really a highly, uh, uh, highly parallelized process, and every, say, every step is kept uh, very similar uh, during WTA and the WGA reaction from the same sample. Um, we applied the method on a cancer cell line, the HeLa cell for, uh, in this case, because uh, a healthy reference cell line was not available. We used Huvex cells as a reference material. We were interested how the genome copy number determines gene expression. So our experiment is based on HeLa cells and, and Huvex cells, of course, which differ highly in the degree of fluidity and expression profile, of course. In average, HeLa cells are triploid tri cancer cells with a high copy number variability among the chromosomes. Some chromosomes, such as chromosome 4, for example, are diploid, while other chromosomes are tetraploid, and some chromosomal regions are even pentaploid, for example. So in contrast, HUVEC uh, cells are primary cells, which are uh, diploid only. So in, in order to determine the impact of chromosome number on the expression profile, we compare the HeLa uh, uh, and the HUVEC cells on the genome and the transcriptome level. Uh, the experiment is shown in all the, 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 the experiment uh, uh, 
workflow is shown in slide uh, 22. And uh, the experiment started in either case with 50 cells uh, using 50 HeLa cells or 50 Huvex cells. And the cells were alive and the sample were split for WGA and WTA reactions. And after our amplification, individual barcoded library preps were done using the GeneRead library prep kit and MySeq sequencing was performed for WGA and WTA samples. So after sequencing, bioinformatic analysis was performed uh, with uh, the Galaxy programs in this case. I cannot see slide 23. Ah, now it's there. Uh, um, in this slide, I want to mention that we uh, uh, determine uh, numerical changes of chromosomes or subchromosomal regions um, by counting reads in, uh, after NGS. And uh, these uh, uh, counting reads were mapped to megabase pair bins of chromosomal regions. We determined a factor between HeLa cells and HUVEX cells. Because HUVEX cells are diploid, as I said before, the factor describes the deviation from diploid copy number uh, in HeLa cells. For example, a factor higher than one corresponds to a higher copy number of the indicated genomic region and uh, in HeLa cells compared to HUVEX cells. And uh, looking on NGS data from the WTA cDNA, we mapped all reads to the transcriptome and the RPKM values of all transcripts were determined and compared between HeLa and HUVEX cells. We selected for uh, differentially expressed genes present in both cell lines. Uh, these transcripts were then mapped to their corresponding chromosomal locus. And after the alignment of the differential expressed genes with a copy number variation uh, determined from genomic reads, we can determine, determine how the copy number drives the gene expression. So this is an a analysis we did to determine how the genome determines the transcriptome or the expression profile. At first, I want to present some primary findings, in this case, uh, the biotype pattern. And the biotype pattern was very similar between HeLa and HUVEX cells. Uh, we found that most reads after WTA map to protein coding regions, only though, uh, only less than 10% 10, uh, 10 of the reads cannot be mapped to the human target sequence. So most of the reads map to the transcriptome. Please, see, uh, please uh, look on the bars at the right side of this y-axis. Almost no reads are mapped to rRNA in this case. This is a good indication that our reverse transcription is highly selective for mRNA in this case, if using our oligo-DT priming uh, during cDNA synthesis. Uh, we found more than 20,000 transcripts from uh, uh, about 9,000 genes, and we found a highly reproducib reproducibility from sample to sample, which can be determined from the scatter plots here HeLa versus HeLa in panel A or HUVEC versus HUVEC cells in uh, panel B. If looking on the panel C, you find the comparison of HeLa cells on the x-axis to HUVEC cells on the y-axis, and that shows more differences, which are also indicated by a lower R-square value. So there is a clear difference in gene expression profile between HeLa and HUVEX cells. Uh, need for a while for a, a switch to slide 27. Hello? Okay, in, uh, in slide 27, you can see panel D, uh, and in panel D, only those transcripts with RPKM value higher than 10 were analyzed. 
So you can see a big overlap of genes co-expressed in HeLa and Huvex cells, but there are also a significant number of genes expressed only in one of the cell lines. For our further analysis, uh, we focus only on those about 5,800 genes which are co-expressed in HeLa and in Huvex cells. We further selected for genes that are differentially expressed with a difference of at least threefold. If there is a differentially, expressor, uh, differentially expression lower than this, we excluded those uh, transcripts. So, as I said, we analyzed all, all those transcripts that are differentially expressed in Hubeck and HeLa cells with a factor of at least threefold. And we mapped these genes of those, uh, of those transcripts uh, to the chromosomal uh, loci and found that more genes showed a higher expression rate in HeLa than in Hubeck cells. This is indicated by the light blue bar or the light blue sector of the bars. The genes higher expressed in Huvex uh, than in HeLa cells are indicated by the dark blue sectors in the bars. At first, looking on the light blue sectors uh, uh, within the bars, uh, in average, more than 70% of differentially expressed genes are expressed at a higher level in HeLa cells. Only le less than 30% of the genes are expressed at a higher level in Hubex cells. This is very striking here. But there are also exceptions. Uh, these, uh, these exceptions are the uh, uh, genes uh, on chromosomes 4, 14, and 18. All three chromosomes harbor almost equal number of genes that are expressed at a higher level in HeLa cells or a higher level in Hubex cells. So in order to explain this effect, at first I want to deduce what is expected from this experiment. So what is our expectation if focusing on the gene expression of genes if comparing HeLa and Hubex cells? Please keep in mind that HeLa and Hubex cells are of different origin, and as seen before, genes are differentially expressed in HeLa cells and Hubex cells. And of course, it is obvious from many studies that different cells show different expression profiles. So what we do express from this experiment? Because we use in our analysis only those genes that are expressed in both cell lines, the number of genes uh, that are overexpressed in, in HeLa cells must resemble the number of genes that are overexpressed in Hubeck cells, at least if you focus on genes in deeply chromosomal regions. But how is the number of overexpressed genes in regions with a chromosome number different from 2N? In this slide, you can see what uh, we have analyzed from our NGS experiment after parallel WGA and WTA looking on the copy number of chromosome 4 and 8 only. The black dotted line indicates the chromosome number in HeLa cells compared to Huvex cells, which we calculated from the number of reads in our NGS experiment. Chromosome 4 is about, is a, is, uh, about 180 MB, megabases long, uh, long, and chromosome 8 has a length of about 150 megabases. I have to refresh my connection here, one moment. Can you see anything? I can see slide 32, Christian. 32? Because I cannot see. That's correct. 32? Yes. So, um, sorry for this inco inconvenience. I can see only uh, I can see no slide at the moment, and I uh, would like to follow up with uh, slide 31. Okay. I hope.
Can you slide? Can you see slide 31? I cannot. Pardon me? Just continue and you can let us know what slide yeah, okay. 31. Uh, uh, I would like to mention that it is uh, um, pretty clear that the uh, factor is around 1 for the whole chromosome 4. This means the chromosome 4 has the same copy number in HeLa cells as in HUVAC cells. Because the copy number in HUVAC cells is 2M, uh, HeLa cells have also two chromosomes of chromosome 4. So the HeLa cells used for this experiment comprise uh, or is uh, quite normal with regards to chromosome 4. So the situation is uh, completely different with chromosome 8. Here, the short arm is also diploid, but uh, the long arm of the chromosome 8 is mostly tetraploid with some triploid uh, uh, patches. Then we mapped all the differentially expressed genes located on chromosome 4, uh, all those genes with uh, at least a threefold difference in gene expression rate between HUVAC and HeLa cells. So can you switch to 32? Can you do this? 32 on. Okay. Uh, we found uh, what we expected, uh, namely the number of genes that are expressed in HeLa cells to a higher level resemble the number of genes that are overexpressed in HUVAC cells if we focus on this diploid chromosome 4. So uh, what we do see, or what do we see here in this uh, um, uh, uh, panel? Uh, the expression level of the HeLa cells uh, compared to HUVAC cells is seen on the y-axis. Each red square um, represents a gene that is differentially expressed. And the position of the red square with regards to the axis indicates the mapping position to the chromosome. The position of the red square with regards to the y-axis here indicates the factor of gene expression in HeLa cells compared to HUVAC cells. And that means that uh, squares higher than one, for example, indicates gene ex uh, genes that are overexpressed in HeLa cells, and squares that are below one corresponds to genes that are overexpressed in diploid HUVAC cells here. So, and the arrow bars indicate the variation between different samples. So, in summary, once again, the number of genes that are expressed in HeLa cells uh, uh, to, uh, at a higher level um, resembles the number of genes that are overexpressed in HUVAC cells if we focus on this, on this diploid chromosome. So switching to slide uh, 31, uh, 30, uh, 31, um, then we mapped also the differentially um, uh, then we met also the differentially expressed genes located on chromosome 8 to their loci and found uh, for the diploid region of chromosome 8 the same pattern we got for the diploid uh, chromosome 4. Uh, but most regions of the chromosome 8 are tetraploid or at least tri triploid in these HeLa cells uh, we analyzed here. In these polyploid regions, uh, in HeLa cells, the number of genes overexpressed in HeLa cells exceeds the dramatically the number of genes overexpressed in the diploid HUVAC cells. In this region, only a single gene is more expressed in HUVAC cells compared to the polyploid HeLa cells. So here you can see uh, that the copy number of the genome region determines the number of overexpressed genes in HeLa cells. Can you switch to slide 34? So, and looking on other diploid chromosomes in HeLa cells, such as chromosome 14 and 18, uh, again, the number of genes overexpressed in HeLa cells resembles the number of genes overexpressed in HUVAC cells just as expected from diploid genome regions. Switching uh, to slide 35, and uh, now I would like 
to look on the uh, other polyplo plo uh, polyploid chromosomal regions such uh, as chromosome 7, 10, or 5. It is the same situation as with chromosome 8, and uh, the number of genes overexpressed in triploid or tetraploid regions in HeLa cells exceeds the number of genes overexpressed in the diploid Hubeck cell line. But in this case, you find more exceptions, for example, on the long arm of chromosome 10. might be valuable to analyze the reasons of this exceptional low expression rates of these genes. So coming to slide 36, this pattern that more overexpressed genes in HeLa cells are found on polyploid genomic regions holds true for most chromosomes in the cancer cell line. Most chromosomes are polyploid in HeLa cells, only the chromosomes four 14 and 18 are diploid in our HeLa cell line. So see the light blue sectors within the bars. Uh, these resemble the number of overexpressed genes per million base pairs. So small chromosome 21 is very extreme here. All genes that are located on chromosome 21 are overexpressed in HeLa cells. And there is no uh, um, gene which is overexpressed in Hubeck cells. So the copy number of chromosome 21 revealed that cro chromosome 21 is triploid in our HeLa cell line. And it was found in various studies uh, that uh, the fluidity of chromosome 21 is very variable uh, in HeLa cells and ranges from 2N to 4N in different HeLa cell lines. The highest density of differentially expressed genes was found on chromosome 19, and this is not unexpected because in human cells, uh, chromosome 19 harbors the highest gene density per se. So coming to slide uh, 37, and I would like to summarize. I think I could show the comparative analysis of genome and the transcriptome is a useful tool uh, to determine uh, genomic effects on the expression profile. And, uh, of course, how changes within the genome change also the expression profile. We developed the Replig cell WTA and WTA kit as a tool to pro provide you with a method to amplify cellular DNA and RNA from the same small sample with high quality and low bias so that uh, comparative analysis can be performed. The highly parallel process introduces minimal bias and results in comparable amplification rates for the same sequences within the genome and transcriptome. So we could show that the method is highly suitable for NGS because a proofreading polymerase is used and uh, no errors are introduced. And the Phi29 polymerase has a strong DNA displacement activity so that hairpin structures within nucleic acids do not inhibit amplification. So slide 38, thank you for your attention. And uh, slide 39, the session is open now for questions. Thank you, Christian, for that informative presentation. We want to get right to the questions and input, so here's a reminder on how to let us know what you have to say. Questions can be submitted via the Q&A button at the lower left. We'll try to get to all of you, but if not, we'll be sure to follow up after the broadcast. Our first question, can I do the analysis also with FFPE material? This is a good question. Uh, we. Uh I think, uh, um, or let me uh, answer in a different way. Uh, we haven't tried so far. We know that uh, we have um, in FFPE samples, uh, the DNA as well as the RNA is blocked uh, by um, covalent bound proteins, for example. And uh, this, is, uh, this hinders uh, the amplification process. So I would not recommend this process with uh, uh, with this um, with this kit 
um, uh, using uh, uh, RepliG FFPE uh, sam uh, using FFPE samples, but at the moment uh, we are doing um, uh, some studies on it. Um, maybe that uh, in, a, in a year or so uh, that we can uh, have more details on it. Great. Sounds promising. Our next question, what is the minimal number of cells I can use for the analysis? Mm -hmm. I, um, I did the study here with 50 cells. And we found uh, that 25 cells is uh, fine as well. But uh, because you, do, do, you split the sample into two vials for WGA uh, and for WTA, uh, it is clear that um, you uh, have a Poisson di distribution effect on it. So if, go doing with, uh, if doing the analysis with 25 cells is fine, uh, uh, but with lower cell numbers, you will have more uh, variability, especially on the uh, part of WGA, because uh, every cell comprises only a single genome, not more. And if you divide this 25 genomes into two tubes, you have, you uh, you have uh, only 12, and half, 12 uh, genomes left in one tube, and this is... Um, for Poisson dis distribution effects, it's bet, uh, better to have more of these, uh, or at least these 12 genomes in it. Great. Thank you. Our next question, is there a difference in NGS library prep if starting from WTA DNA or WGA DNA? Mm, this is a good question. After WTA, you, uh, you uh, end up with uh, DNA as well as after WGA, and uh, both samples are absolutely uh, of the same quality and uh, comprises the same molecular weight, for example, for DNA and uh, cDNA. So uh, you can start with the same process using the WTA and uh, WGA DNA. And the process is started with fragmentation of uh, WGA DNA and fragmentation of WTA DNA. And afterwards, you do your library prep. So there is no difference in handling uh, of uh, WGA DNA or WTA DNA to uh, uh, channel it, uh, these DNAs into the NGS process. Great. Thank you for that. We have time for one more question. Tammy from the University of Toledo asks, for the single-cell transcriptomics for genes that have a low expression, is there some idea of what the cell number cutoff might be? Mm -hmm. um, this is uh, with regards to the kit I, I, I mentioned uh, in this single-cell uh, transcriptomic uh, session, and uh, we found um, it it works fine with a single cells, but of course you have various copies and copy numbers of various transcripts within the single cell. And um, we found that um, with very low copy numbers, uh, um, it is a, um, uh, there is a, a cutoff value of uh, um, detection. Uh, uh, um, uh, probability, I would say. So if you have one copy, for example, then you have a given uh, detection probability. Um, with, uh, 10 copies, uh, copy num uh, with 10 copies within a single cell, we found in most cases that, uh, uh, um, that those transcripts are uh, represented after WTA, but they cannot be uh, quantified because of uh, the uh, again because of uh, uh, Poisson this, uh, uh, Poisson effects uh, on reverse transcription ligation and amplification. If having more than these ten copies, then you uh, get a better and better chance to quantify also those transcripts. But uh, once again. Um, below 10 copies, you have a good chance to get the, uh, the copies, but you cannot quantify it. 
uh, and um, uh, you need more uh, copies for a quantification, for a good quantification with a high, uh, um, uh, um, with a low variability. Great, thank you. We're done with questions now. I'd just like to ask Christian if he has any final comments or thoughts for our audience. Not from my side. Okay. Thank you for that important information. If we weren't able to speak directly with you today, we'll be sure to follow up with any of your comments and questions. We want to thank you for taking part. We also want to thank today's presenters for joining us here at labroots.com, the leading scientific social networking site. For more information, please visit us at www.labroots.com. Today's webcast will be available for on-demand viewing on our website through March of 2016. We'll let you know when it's been posted and we help you pass that information on to any colleagues who couldn't take part in today's broadcast. Thank you very much. See you next time. Goodbye.